We're going to go back now to Jake Wallace Simmons. He's an associate editor at DailyMail.com. He's on the scene in Manchester, and he joins us now. Jake, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yeah, hi. What do you know? Well, uh, I'm here right on the scene just by the police cordon, uh, and a strange sense of calm has descended here in Manchester following the uh, huge chaos that erupted at about 11 p.m. local time when a big explosion was heard at the entrance to the arena. Uh, I arrived on the scene about 20 minutes after that, and it was a scene of carnage. There was uh, crowds of people moving away from the arena. There were parents running into the arena to try to find their children who were lost. And the first people that I spoke to were a couple of young women in their 20s who'd been at this Ariana Grande concert and had seen the explosion. They were so close to the explosion that they were hit by pieces of debris, and they missed death, they said, by a matter of minutes. As we know, there have been multiple fatalities here, although the number has not been confirmed, and a good deal of quite horrific injuries, as well as a lot of lighter injuries as well. Those two young women told me that they saw a woman covered in blood uh, leaning against a parked car waiting for assistance. They saw a child being lifted into an ambulance by paramedics. Um, all the wounded were herded into a car park to begin with, um, and now some other casualty stations have been set up as well in nearby hotels. There's one hotel nearby in particular, which is hosting a lot of children who were caught up in the, uh, in, in the attack and in the chaos thereafter, um, who have been separated from adults and, and have no one there to look after them. So this, these are the scenes of chaos that have dominated uh, Manchester this evening. But now there's a sense that everything is slightly calmed down. Um, the police have regained control. They're keeping everybody on the other side of the cordon and are taking, just taking this um, uh, it, you know, through the steps that they've all no doubt rehearsed. Were there, um, g give us some context, assuming there is any, Jake. Were there any indications in the last week that there was going to be anything like that? Were there any warnings sent that the, the, there was an expectation of authorities that there might be a terror attack or anything like this? Not at all. The police did not issue any kind of warning in advance that the terror threat uh, had risen. Um, recently in Britain, the, uh, the, the, the focus of terrorists has been, as you know, on London. We had that successful attack not more than a couple of months ago in Westminster, where a policeman was stabbed to death by a terrorist. And shortly afterwards, another man who was clearly planning the attack, planning a similar attack, with a rucksack full of knives, was arrested. So really, people have been thinking about London. Uh, and there's a sense, a little bit, that Britain has been taken off guard here, because people have been focusing on London. There's been no sense of any heightened alerts or any warnings about Manchester. Uh, and certainly not at this concert here where, you know, thousands and thousands of, of young teenagers were just enjoying an Ariana Grande concert. Uh, the star herself had just left the stage about 30 seconds before the bomb went off. There were lots and lots of pink balloons in the audience, um, and people speculated they may have been behind the, 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 the sound uh, before people started to see the fatalities and realize that this was a very serious attack indeed. So we've got two details coming across the wires here in the U.S. Tell me if you know anything about either one. First, that hospitals in the region are reporting that the wounds they're treating are consistent with those suffered in a nail bomb attack. And the second, uh, this being reported by an American news agency, that this was possibly a suicide bomber at work. Have you heard either one of those things? Well, those are some of the rumors that are swirling around, but the police are urging caution at the moment. Uh, normally, the British police are quite good in updating the media when they have definite conclusions uh, or lines of inquiry that they can confirm, but that hasn't happened as of yet, and so I would urge a note of caution in that. However, there was one eyewitness who reported that her hair and her bag and her clothes were covered uh, in, in, in blood and, uh, and, and debris from human bodies. She'd obviously been very close to the bomb, um, and she'd been hit by some of this stuff which came at her from the blast. Now, that you know, may suggest uh, a suicide bomb. It may be what people have been picking up and running with in terms of the developing rumors about this. But as of yet, the police have not confirmed either of those reports. Hmm. Give us a sense of where this took place. Is this right in the center of the city of Manchester? That's right. This is right in the center of Manchester. It's one of the proud uh, parts of Manchester. It's a huge arena that can seat 
tens of thousands of people, and it's right next door to Manchester's main train station. So this is really the hub of Manchester, and Manchester is a major city in the north of England, yeah. which, uh, which is home to hundreds of thousands of people. Um, you know, the, the, the concert venue was, was packed out with lots and lots of, of, of teenagers and young people, particularly uh, girls and young women. Um, some older people, some parents taking their kids to, the, to, to this concert, coming from far and wide, all over Britain, Ariana Grande fans having a chance to see her. Ah. And by all accounts, they enjoyed the concert until it was brought to such a horrible conclusion. I, if you're joining us now, these are, you're looking at live pictures from Sky News in Great Britain of the scene outside the arena in Manchester. We're on the phone now with Jake Wallace-Simons, who's a Daily Mail uh, reporter, uh, reminding us that the, the scene of this is right in the center of uh, that famed industrial center, center, and it is right over, apparently, a rail hub. Um, kids at this concert, not exactly sure how many have perished, but apparently a significant number. Um, Jacob, the train still shut down in Manchester? Yes, the center of the city is on total lockdown. I mean, let's not forget it's already 10 past 1 in the morning as well, so it's quieter now than it would have been during the day. But yes, the center of the city is on lockdown. Certainly the area around the arena is, is all locked down. Police are stopping anybody from passing through. There are a lot of frustrated people here who, who weren't aware that an attack had taken place but can't get to their hotels or can't get home. The trains aren't running. There's a real sense that this was a major, major incident that took place here in Manchester. Uh, and at the moment, everybody is just waiting for the uh, confirmation of the number of dead and seriously wounded. Um, there have been a number of people that I've seen here, uh, relatives of people who are missing, frantic with worry, pleading with police officers for news. And the police yeah. officers are taking them to casualty stations to see if they can spot their loved ones. So this is a very serious incident that has taken Britain by surprise this evening. Yeah, it is serious. Sky News is now reporting 19 have been confirmed killed in this attack. We're not exactly sure uh, the nature of it beyond what we've already said. Some news organizations are suggesting... Uh, it was a suicide bombing, apparently, in the lobby of this arena, right at the tail end of an Ariana Grande concert. But 19 apparently dead, an unknown number of injured. Jake, um, do you have a sense of the magnitude of the injuries? Did, are, there, are there a lot of people being treated right now for non-fatal injuries? There are, there are a lot of people being treated. Um, they've all been kept well away from the eyes of the press. Um, but... According to reports from eyewitnesses who have left the stadium, uh, a lot of them are, have been sitting on the forecourt outside the stadium where they've been receiving treatment. And I've heard people reporting um, uh, hor horrible scenes of people with their faces uh, mutilated, their bodies mutilated, um, people propping themselves up against the wall, covered in blood, and all of the grisly, mm. grisly stories that have become all too familiar in Europe in the past couple of years. Now, well, if, that sure. figure of 19, uh, if that figure of 19 fatalities is correct, then that would put this up there with one of the worst terror attacks that Britain has endured in the past 20 years. I mean, it's well, not so let, think... let, let, let me just say, we're, we're getting that number now, Jake, from police in Manchester in the UK. Uh, 19 dead at this stage. They're counting 50 injured. So give us a sense of the scale of this. When was the last time something like this happened in Great Britain? I think the last time when something of this magnitude happened on British soil was probably in 2007 when there was the London attack where a bus was blown up in Russell Square and there were some bombs on the tube on the underground as well. Uh, in, in, in that uh, attack, that was a coordinated series of attacks that took out a lot of different people at a lot of different places. And we haven't seen anything as bad since then. And Britons have really felt that that was behind us, so we haven't. We, we, you know, we thought that it, we weren't going to see anything as bad as that again. The attack yeah. that happened just a few weeks ago in Westminster was a knife attack and a, and a car ramming. It was terrible, but it was not on this sort of scale. This is no. 19 people blown up at a concert. Uh, it does. I mean, you know, every death is serious, but this does seem to be particularly harrowing. Tonight. It's shocking. It's, it's shocking, and yet in some ways it's not. Jake, thanks a lot for that, for your report from the scene and your perspective. We want to.